So I'm going to simulate Jen as my patient. Um, she doesn't have any upper extremity dysfunction, um, but I will walk through the Fugelmeyer um, as you would perform it, and then I'll stop and give um, tidbits about what you're looking for with each example. Um, so the test should be, um, you test every movement on both their affected side and their unaffected side. Um, so we start with their reflexes. Um, the easiest way to find a re their bicep and tricep reflex um, is to support their arm on yours. Keep it back, my hands are cold, sorry. Okay. And then to palpate the tendon. And then go ahead and test right on that tendon. And then you'll feel a muscle twitch. So again, you do it on both the affected and the unaffected side. It's a little bit more difficult when you're doing it with your non-dominant hand, because then you have to hit them awkwardly <laughs> with your non-dominant hand. Same thing, palpate the tendon. Positioning as well, you always want your patient to be in a chair um, that doesn't move um, and with no armrests, or as close to that as you possibly can get. If they need to be in a wheelchair, remove the armrests, at least on the affected side so that they don't impede their motion at all. Okay? And then we'll go right down the sheet. Um, uh, for anyone, we if you don't have a copy of this, sheet is actually on Insight, so we can make sure that we provide it on the same site we post this video to. So for the flexor synergy, what you want to do is have um, your patient, we're going to say that Jen's left side is affected, so we're going to demonstrate all the movements to the right side first, and then to the left side. Um, so you want to avoid using words like, um, I want you to, can you show me, because um, it's not that they're doing a movement for, for us, is we want to assess the movement of their arm. So, um, and then anytime you're demonstrating, you want to hold your hand in a closed position because we don't mark down on the open hand. So sometimes patients will focus on trying to keep their fingers extended when it's not necessary. So just a relaxed, closed hand. So the first one, you're going to bring your the back of your hand to your knee. You can open your legs up a little bit. There you go. To the your opposite knee. So the back of your hand to the inside of your knee. Good, then bring your hand up and show me the back of your hand, good. So the biggest thing I'll show you when we do her left side, you can cue them if they're not fully abducted um, or retracted, you can cue them for the position you want. And then go ahead, Jen, and bring your hand back to your knee, back of your hand to your opposite knee, excellent. Okay, so go ahead and you can relax your right side. And then with your left arm, back of your hand to your opposite knee. Bring that hand up, show me the back of your hand. Good, and this is where you wanna actually get up out of your chair, come, and you wanna make sure that their scapula is retracted, they're externally rotated, and fully abducted to 90. And um, in the breakdown, it'll show you partial points and um, full points for scoring that. Um, if Jen can only get her hand to here and like this, then she would get partial movement. Um, go ahead and relax. One thing that you will see, especially as you have an older population, a lot of people cannot um, pronate and supinate completely. So you're, that's why you compare one side to the other to make sure they're symmetrical. So if on their non-affected side, they're only showing you partial back of the hand, like this, and then it's the same on the other side, then that's a full that's full score because it's symmetrical from side to side. So then the next one um, is the opposite, the extensor synergy. So that's where you say, um, Jen, with your right arm, bring your hand up so I can see the back of your hand. Good, elbow up and out. Bring that hand back of your hand to your opposite knee. Good, and here the movement that you're assessing is this position the position she's in right now. Go ahead and relax. And then with your left hand, same thing. And back down to your knee. So here, again, you wanna make sure that she's fully internally rotated, she's adducted across, 
and that her hand is fully um, in this ending position. And then you'll get up again and make sure that she's in that position. The next one, I'm gonna have you bring your hand to your lower back. And then I, <laughs> I always turn and show them how I want their hand positioned on their lower back. And back out front. And your left hand. Okay. Again, this is where you get up, come and look, make sure their hand's all the way back. If they can't clear their iliac crest and bring their hand all the way to their spine, then they get partial points if they get stuck in this position, which happens a lot. With shoulder flexion, you're gonna go ahead and start. Again, I'm gonna demonstrate with my hand closed. Bring your hand to your side. Go ahead with thumb pointing towards the ceiling. Bring your hand up to shoulder height. Good, and back down. Now with your left arm, thumb towards the ceiling. Good, hold it there. The big things you're looking for in this position are full elbow extension, and then you wanna watch, you can relax. Um, you wanna watch as they're bringing their arm up that they don't go into abduction and elbow flexion immediately, which is typically the compensation when someone has weakness. So you wanna make sure they are truly flexing forward, um, fully extended at the elbow, no abduction. If someone is out here, you can cue them, bring your hand towards the middle and let them try it again. With each of these, you can give verbal instructions, no tactile cues to facilitate the movement, and they can repeat the movement three times and you can take the best of the three. Pronation and supination. Jen, I want you to bring your elbow to your side like an L. Good. Go ahead and turn your hand up and down. So, and your left side, and down. Good. Here, you wanna make sure that they're able to maintain that starting position. Um, if they can't um, hold that starting position, um, then they, hold, they get a score of zero if they can't maintain it. Again, you wanna look for symmetry. Um, as people get older, they can't supinate all the way. So you wanna look, is it symmetrical to the other side? Which is always why we start with the non we're moving on to shoulder ab uh, abduction. And this is why we need no arms on the chair, this one particularly. Um, and Jen, I'm gonna have you bring your arm out to the side. Good, and back down. Now your left. The biggest um, area you see here that people will do is they'll have their arm out in front of them. They won't be abducting out to the side. Give them that cue to bring that arm back as they're moving up and have them try. <laughs> they bring it out here have them bring it back and try again. Even if they're here, say, bring that arm back and then start again, this is the position I want. So give them that cue before you mark them down. Again, in um, any position where you um, want the elbow fully extended, make sure the elbow is extended. If someone's presenting with a flexed elbow, um, so she's abducting, bend your elbow for me. You can always come up and see, is it, can she get to a full extension? Or some people do have, they don't, they're unable to achieve a zero degree extension. So if it's hard here, then that is their true full extension. So you can, that qualifies as a full extension. I had someone yesterday that was gonna think about 20 degrees of elbow extension. So we were able to come there. So shoulder flexion from 90 degrees to 180. Jen, I'm gonna have you start with your hand up here, thumb towards the ceiling, bring that arm right up, and I always tell them, keep it close to your ear because you'll have them way out here as a Y. Bring it right in up to your ear, back down to your side. Good. Left hand, start here, thumb towards the ceiling, right up towards your ear, and back down. Excellent. Pronation and supination. So this time it's elbow at zero. So you want the hand down towards their side. <coughs> and elbow extended fully. Turn your hand over and back down. Good. And relax. And with your left hand. And you're always demonstrating with a mirror image, so the opposite side. And relax. So on the score sheet, it walks you through. Unless someone gets full points for their this entire first section, so they have no deficits, 
If they have no deficits, you retest the reflexes. They still should be normal, but for some reason you would retest them. Um, but typically if you're performing the assessment, they're gonna have one area of difficulty. So most of the time they get a zero because you don't retest the reflexes. And that walks you through it. Moving on to the wrist. So Jen, bring your hand to your side um, like an L. I want you to uh, turn your hand down, bring your wrist up. And here you really want to test at a 15 degree flexion. So bring your hands down just a little bit. And you can put them in the position you want if you can see that they can fully flex. So bring that hand up again, not all the way, just to about here and hold it there. And you want to um, stabilize proximal to the wrist and then apply gentle pressure. Oh, can you hold it there for me? Don't let me move it. Good. And then on the other side, up, arm at your side like an L. Good. Bring that wrist all the way up. Okay, now bring it down and hold it. Don't let me move it. Apply pressure. Good job. And then repeated dorsiflexion and molar flexion. Same position, arm up the side like an L. Just one arm. Bring your wrist up and down for me. All the way up and all the way down. Good. And then your left. And then stability with elbow at zero degrees. So again, the exact same thing as we just did. Bring your arm out in front of you. Keep that elbow straight, don't bend it. Bring your wrist up, okay? Lower it just a little bit. Bend it just a little for me. Right there, hold it strong, don't let me move it. Good. And left arm, bring that wrist up. And down, up. Don't let me move, uh, bring it down just a little. Up. So right about this, Relax your wrist. Right about this position. Hold it strong. Don't let me move it. And relax. Good. And now we're going to alternate. Bring your arm out straight in front of you. Bring that wrist up and down. Good. Left side. Good. All right. And then circumdu circumduction, what you're looking for is you want the wrist to hit all four quadrants. So up side, down, side. And you want it to be smooth and symmetrical in that circle, hitting all four of those, all four sides. So typically this is done in an L position, um, but it's not specified. So if they can't get into that strong L position, but they can get that circumduction, it still counts as full points because you're looking at the coordination of that movement. So hold your hand at your side, bring your hand in a circle. Good. And with your left side. Good. Good. So moving on to the hand, what we're looking for, um, Jen, go ahead and make a fist. Good. And what we really want here is opposition of the thumb. So a lot of people will tuck their thumb in here, just give them a cue to bring it across their knuckles. That'd be great. Now with your left side, make a fist. Good, again, looking for that thumb and making sure all of those fingers are closed. Now open, excellent, looking for all digit extension. All right, so this next one with flexion and PIP and DIP, um, you're gonna cue them to bring in just the tips of their fingers and they can hold it at their side, good. And then you wanna apply pressure. So hold it there, don't let me pull and relax. And this is an extremely difficult position for people to get into. Oftentimes you have to cue them to straighten out this part and just bend the very tips of their fingers. Left hand, good. Don't let me move you. And give a gentle pull. For thumb adduction, you use a scrap of paper. You can just use a piece of paper, fold it in fourths. Jen, I want you to hold your hand out like this with your fingers straight. This is very important. Um, even when they're maintaining that grasp of the paper, the fingers have to stay straight. So Jen, for this one, I'm actually gonna have you turn towards the camera. Good. And I want you to bring your thumb up. So it's important that she brings her thumb up, that we don't just, put your thumb down, that 
that we don't just put the paper in. They need to be able to bring that thumb up, put the paper in, close your finger. Now don't let me pull this paper and keep these fingers straight. Hold it, hold it, good. So oftentimes people will curl those fingers in to really maintain a good grip. They have to stay straight or it's partial score. Okay, left side. No, stay looking at the camera so they can see your fingers. Thumb up. Good. Squeeze. Hold it tight. Excellent. And you don't have to give a very strong tug. You just need to make sure that they can maintain that grasp. You can turn back towards me if you don't mind. This one, it's best to use a pen or a pencil that doesn't have any grippy stuff on it like mine does. Again, hold your hand in the L position. I want you to hold your thumb and your finger like mine. Good. And here you can have her open, open just a little. You can place the pencil where it needs to be. Squeeze. Don't let me pull this pencil away. And you give a gentle tug upward. Open. And now with your left hand, thumb and finger together. Again, you want um, you want to get them into this starting position so that they have to do the motion. And squeeze. Don't let me pull, your, pull this out. And relax. Great job. The next one is a cylindrical grasp. So again, they have to get into the starting position before you put the cylinder in their hand. Um, we have a piece of PVC pipe. A lot of people use a tomato paste can. Um, just a small cylinder that female hands can get a good grip on, okay? So I want you to hold your hand in this position, okay? I'm gonna set this in here, squeeze. Just your first two fingers and your thumb. Hold on tight, don't let me pull it. Good, and relax. Now with your left, good. She has a nice, good open C. I can put that in. Good, just the top two fingers and the thumb. Hold it tight. Don't let me pull it up. And relax. And the spherical grip. Again, you're gonna have her hold her hand up. Again, you're looking for thumb opposition across the ball. Squeeze that ball. You can use a tennis ball. We have kind of a racket ball, a racket ball. Racket ball, ball. Don't let me pull that out. And relax. Okay, oh, same thing. Again, looking for thumb opposition with this. Don't let me pull it out. And relax. All right. So the next three with coordination, you can look at all at the same time. So with the tremor, you're looking for a tremor during the actual movement. So I usually tell them multiple times with their eyes open, we're gonna start with your right hand. I want you to use your fingertip, touch your knee and your nose. Knee to nose. Have them start at the knee. Now close your eyes, okay? And this is where you need a stopwatch. Um, mine's not excellent at this moment. Um, but a stopwatch that you can really start and stop and get the seconds, because that's the most important. So close your eyes, and now you're gonna to touch your knee from your knee to your nose five times as fast as you can. Ready? Set, go. Good. And you would, that was six. <laughs> you would stop it, you would start it the second she touched, left her knee to go to her nose, and stop it when she's back at her knee. And now your left side. So you record that time down here because it really matters um, for the scoring of the timed portion of it. All right, eyes open. Tip of your knee to the tip of your nose. Good. To your knee. Good. Close your eyes. I want you to touch the tip of your knee to the tip of your nose five times as fast as you can. Ready, set, go. Stop. So again, I would record the time. So Jen obviously had no tremors, so you can score these all at the same time. Um, were they symmetrical? Did it look the same? Was she able to get to her knee to her nose? This is in um, the dysmetria, how you would score that. And then the time, that's why we do it all at the same time so you don't have to do this multiple times. Um, 
was it greater than five seconds, two to five seconds, or less than a second difference between the two sides? And then you would score it. All right, on to sensation. So the first one is light touch. So what I do, Jen, I'm gonna have you go ahead and close your eyes. Tell me when you can feel me touching you. Start proximal, move distal. positioning you can have them start with their hands in a neutral position like this and then you can get palmar and dorsal surface at the same time with eyes open I'm gonna tell Jen um, this is one area too that I can get the range of motion at the same time that I'm showing them um, the positioning but I typically do them separately but this is up down elbow bent elbow straight wrist up wrist down, thumb up, thumb down. Close your eyes. Is your arm up or down? Down. Is your elbow bent or straight? Bent. Is your wrist up or down? Down. Is your thumb up or down? Down. Good. Um, so you want to give them multiple trials. So if I was testing Jen and she said her thumb was up, I would test her thumb a couple more times just to make sure it was consistently inaccurate. Same thing over here, and I do show them what it feels like with each movement again. I'm gonna raise your arm. This is up and down, eyes open. Elbow bent, elbow straight, wrist up, wrist down, thumb up, thumb down. Go ahead and close your eyes. Is your arm up or down? Up. Is your elbow bent or straight? Straight. Is your wrist up or down? Down. Is your thumb up or down? Up. And then um, I'll show you the range of motion just on her affected side. So you want to go through, see, make sure she gets full flexion, abduction, double flexion. Any pain with any of this? Nope. And that's the, you can do the passive range of motion and the pain all at the same time. So thank you, Jen. You're welcome. That is the